Hey guys, we are back in Oklahoma for a last hunt of the year, I think, whitetail anyways. And um, man, over Christmas time, I caught the COVID, the Rona, and man, is that a nasty uh, sickness. Uh, I have been uh, actually vaxxed and uh, completely vaxxed and it had the breakthrough uh, of, the, of the Rona. So, but um, I'm over that and I'm telling you what, ivermectin works. Don't listen to the uh, idiots and the pundits, man. I'm telling you, ivermectin worked for me. I started taking it on the fourth day. By the sixth day, I was all pretty much better. But uh, the first day one through five was like in bed, sicker than a dog. Worst uh, pain I felt in a long time being sick. But anyways, we're in Oklahoma and ready to go shoot a big buck to end the season. Uh, came up here because we got through January 15th. So um, let's get this going. Nothing new under the sun. One life to live, seeking fun. But shallow is the self-lived life, for me, myself, oh, so much strife. But Jesus is the answer for a life perplexed and wanting more. It's never easy self to deny, but it's the only way to a life on high. At least a day uh, scouting, at least a day. And uh, hopefully I'm gonna set out about three cameras uh, up on this ridge. This is close to where I missed that buck, that big buck uh, last rut in November. So we're gonna try to get set up, um, set these cameras up on the ridge and catch something. And unless I find any really good sign, I'll probably still be hunt uh, not hunting tomorrow, but scouting. Just so I can find the deer first. I have no clue where they are because I've never hunted January. So, anyways, let's get to looking. I had picked out a couple of other spots on a couple of ridges over there. I probably hiked about three miles across this ridge. And I'm back right in that same spot where I shot those two doe and missed that big buck. And actually, the same spot as a place where I'm seeing the best sign i would have thought i would have seen some good sign over there but there's still some of it. there's more rubs these rubs weren't here whenever i was hunting because i looked all this area real good so there's definitely a buck in here been rubbing and they look pretty fresh i mean they're not old so i'm gonna check the i haven't checked the uh, mock scrapes that I made up here. But I'm gonna check them once I know what one is for sure. There's another one somewhere over here, but I may end up just back up on this ridge again. We'll see. Yeah the scrapes are the scrapes look like they're pretty inactive so I did freshen up one on top of the hill up here where I shot those two doe and that missed that big buck. Yeah, just as a curiosity thing, I might pull a deer in. There is some food up on top of these ridges, though. I'm finding a lot of these walnuts. Looks like they're walnuts or, I don't know, maybe... Um, I don't know what they are, but they're, there's still quite a few of these up on this ridge over here, too. So they could be feeding through there. I think the key's going to be finding the food. When I finally got back to Texas, I started hunting again. 
But man, I just could not get those dough uh, to come into the feeders and never really had an opportunity to, to let an arrow fly. Just had these young bucks coming in all the time. But uh, so that evening, actually uh, a couple of nights before this, I started putting my dinger on at night to see if I could get some pigs or maybe axis deer coming in at night. And uh, sure enough, I had some a couple of big old axis bucks come in to the feeder just shortly after 11 p.m. And my dinger gets off. I look out there. I see it's a huge axis buck. And so I go over to my shooting window and I start to open it up. But I made the rookie mistake of turning on my microphone uh, without covering the green light. And, that, and as dark as it was, that green light just lit up the night. And that deer looked up at me and he was gone a lickety split before I could even get my bow off the hook. Sitting on my porch, and there's Molly out there with her two buddies out there eating. <laughs> These deer are really tame. I think they've earned the right to die of an old age. Hopefully they make a whole lot of uh, fallow babies, and then we'll have a fallow herd on the ranch in uh, maybe, uh, who knows, 10 years, 15 years. So we'll see if they start reproducing, but they're hanging around. They've been hanging around for uh, better than six months now. So I was getting lots of work done, cutting and burning cedar. And uh, I was always getting in the blind as much as I could. And then I had uh, animals coming to the cabin, just animals that I could not shoot or would not shoot. Um, had this nice uh, bull elk come in, uh, a spike. But we're not gonna shoot nothing but mature bull elk uh, on my property. So uh, anyways, it's kind of cool seeing all these different animals. Guys, we are well past whitetail season. The only thing I got on the table for today is pigs or axis deer. So we're hoping we get one of those down tonight. But uh, I've got my rifle with me as well as my bow because we're getting, I'm getting close to the time. I'm probably about only have about two or th more, three more weeks of hunting before I move overseas or get ready to move overseas. I'll be busy for a couple of months before we go over there. But um, so I'm hoping to get something down if I got an axis deer that's coming through a doe or a, or a buck, mature buck. I'm going to pop him with a rifle if uh, if I get the opportunity and they don't come in the feeder they really haven't been coming to the feeders the last year actually it's rare to see them at a feeder so I'm a lot smarter than whitetail so let's get in the blind and get quiet we're gonna wait into the dark because I've had a pig big a boar coming in there in the evening time um, up anywhere from 7 to 9 uh, p.m. so Hopefully we'll get a shot at him tonight. Kill him with my bow at night, so stay tuned. All right, guys, we're locked and loaded in the north blind. <laughs> I've been trying to kill this pig at night now for, uh, I don't know, maybe a week. It's about the only thing I have coming in. The axis steer are not around. But uh, last two nights, I've been in the middle blind because I had a south wind, and uh, I've had elk both times there first time i had two elk come in last night i had 11 elk coming in and inside my little water pin and some people ask why i put that that pin there it's because it's to keep the pigs out of the water if you don't if you don't uh cover your water like that or keep the pigs out then you don't get a uh, credit for your uh tax evaluation your wildlife tax evaluation so that's why i do that but there were three elk inside that pen at one time and they could barely move in there <laughs> could have killed a, a cow elk there was about three or maybe four of them that looked like they were 500 pounds probably 450 500 pounds but but uh, we're not going to kill a cow elk or or um 
any immature bulls. It's got to be a mature bull. I've only had one opportunity two years ago. Not actually an opportunity. I was in the wrong blind. Same day, same morning, sitting in the blind, 150, 200 yards away. So, anyway, we are going to sit here for this pig. I doubt I see any axis deer, but in case I see some axis deer floating out in the distance, I got my fire stick. My 30 out 6 fire stick, so tends to bore me but there are occasions like this when I'm getting ready to move overseas and I'm getting short on time to hunt for probably the next three years so I'm going to use that if I see an axis deer going out and try to pop a axis deer for my last time in the next three years or so hopefully I can get back on some vacation and hunt but anyways hopefully we're going to get this pig down so here we go Really had no action except this one little doe that came in. Didn't come in all the way, but then ran off until uh, the sun went down and the big pig showed. The, the problem was he had his head to me uh, for about three minutes, and I was standing waiting to try to shoot him. So it took a while for him to turn where I could actually get a shot. whack that pig I think you saw it um I didn't hear him crash but uh and I don't know how much penetration that got it looked like the arrow was a little bit forward so I'm gonna sneak back to the cabin and I'm gonna take a look on my computer download the footage and see see what it looks like so so after taking a look at this video um that shot was way too far forward. I don't even know if it got any lung. So, um, almost looks like no man's land. So I don't think I'm gonna find this pig, but I'm gonna leave this pig overnight and try to go out there tomorrow morning and find it. Uh, anyway, so uh, we'll check tomorrow, get back tomorrow morning with you. We are at the scene of the crime next morning. Here's my arrow, I saw it fall out. And I think that was on video too. I don't have much high hopes of finding this pig too high, a little bit too high and a little bit too forward. <laughs> Actually not really too high. It just should have been about four to six inches back. I don't see much blood, but here's the arrow. <clears throat> There's definitely enough penetration. I mean, it was, that arrow's at least uh, eight to 10 inches in there. Well, that's encouraging if the blood keeps up like that maybe he is dead we'll see well guys I'm almost back to last blood right over here and I grid searched all this area over here and I think that pig's gonna live it's too far in no man's land needed to be about four inches back a little bit since he was kind of quartering to me, I was trying to aim tighter to that shoulder close up to the front. But um, plus, you know, shooting at night, it takes you a little bit when you flip that light on. It takes just a little bit of time to adjust your eyes. And I got to open both eyes and look and see. So it's just trying to get it a little closer to that uh, shoulder. But obviously, I put it in front of the shoulder and a little too high. So. Anyway, that's a wrap for looking for this pig. I think he's going to live. I'll probably see him on the camera again. Maybe get another chance to kill him. I'm going to go ahead and post this video. It's getting pretty long. <laughs> and uh, I don't know when you'll see me again on a post. Um, I've got a lot of things i got to get done. I've been cutting cedar and burning cedar. And, and uh, trying to get things ready for when I move overseas. My cousin's going to be take care, taking care of the place and keeping up with my wildlife evaluation. So tax exemption. Um, anyways, uh, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and uh, be sure and tick the reminder bell and you'll get notification of any new videos coming out in the future. Probably be a lot more sparse, but uh, I'll keep uh, posting as much as I can. So thanks for watching.